Welcome to Metal Casting Lecture Series by Prof. Joyjit Ghosh. This is the 8th lecture of a series of lectures. This lecture will be on sand casting core and core making. He will be discussing about core, core print, core making processes, core ingredients, core boxes, core types, core print design. So, do not miss and watch the full video. For the next video in the lecture series, please click the suggested video link above. You may also click on the playlist at end of the video to access all the videos. Please subscribe this channel and yes, do not forget to like and share. Also click on the bell icon to receive instant information of new videos uploaded. Thank you. Hello friends, welcome to this lecture 8 of a series of lecture in which we will be discussing about sand casting and metal casting processes. So here in this lecture, we'll be discussing about cores and core making. So what is core? We have already discussed. Core is basically a sand shape uh, which we insert in the mold to create holes or the internal feature or recess of the casting. Remember, it is made of sand. So the metal will solidify about the core and once the metal solidified above the core, we remove the cores from the solidified metal by various techniques. We basically break it out and we take it out. Okay. So to create internal features, we require cores. Now cores are fitted to prints made by the pattern in the mold, which is called core prints. So core prints are additional portion added to the mold, to the pattern and to the core for locating and supporting the core. It is very important that the core should be located in right position and it is very important that the core should be supported uh, because it will come under high metallostatic pressure and it will resist the pressure and be in its right location. So it has to be located and has to be supported. So this projection is called the core prints. We have discussed in previous lecture details uh, about what is core and what is core print. So I'm not going into that details again. Rather we should discuss the core making portion. <clears throat> so core are made using core sands. Now what are the core sands? Core sands are basically composed of dry silica sand which is mixed with core oil and binders. So what are the core oil and what are the binders that we'll be discussing? Core oil basically is composed of linseed oil resin light mineral oil now how much linseed oil linseed oil is, consists of around 50 to 60 percent and uh, 15 25 percent resin and the rest is basically the mineral oil and what are the binders the binders are of various types depending on the strength required uh, the different types of binders are selected for core now these binders acquires its binding property when the core is baked that means we heat it so thermosetting plastic core binders uh, it gives high strength thermosetting resin binders it gives high strength and we have protein binders where collapsibility is the main criteria so what are the characteristics that is required of a good coarse sand that we'll be discussing just like molding sand coarse sand should have certain properties it should have sufficient green strength it should have sufficient dry strength dry strength means uh, when the moisture is not there, when it, when it comes in contact with the molten metal, the moisture will dry. So, moisture will evaporate and strength at that period of time is called the dry strength. It should have, obviously, it should have refractoriness. It should also be permeable. That means it should allow the gases to escape. And obviously, lastly, an important property is that collapsibility. Once the metal has solidified around the core, we should be able to break the core and take out the we should have to break the mold and take out the casting and then we have to remove the core so the core should be collapsible and smoothness it should be able to take give good surface finish to the internal features of the casting so these are the required properties of a core sand Cores are normally made in boxes called core boxes. These core boxes are normally made of wood. 
So there are different types of core boxes. I am not going into the details of the different types of core boxes. You have half core boxes depending on the requirement. And you can slab or dump core boxes, split core boxes, trickle core boxes. So various types of core boxes are there. And you can see here, these are the various types of core boxes in which you make the cores. And again, depending on the position, how the cores are fitted, you can classify cores into different categories. We have horizontal cores that is placed horizontally and we have vertical cores which is placed vertically that balanced on both sides. It is called balanced core. Hanging core is hanging from the top using a wire is called hanging core. And then we have unbalanced core, wing core. From one side it is uh, placed like this. So it is a wing core or drop core. So cores can be also called by different names. So this is a core you can see from this side it's supported here core print. Okay, core making. How do you make core? Very important. Uh, first we have to mix the sand. We have to mix the sand with the core oil and the binders. It is mixed uniformly and then the mixed core sand is placed in the core boxes and ramped properly and the excess sand is removed or struck off. Then using a vent wire, we make venting holes in the uh, core so that there is enough space for the gases to escape. Then reinforcing the core, the core comes under heavy pressure of the heavy molten metal. So it has to have sufficient strength. So steel wires are inserted in the core to provide more strength. So that is called reinforcing the core and then the core is baked. Now why this is baked? The binder uh, used in the core making uh, acquires its binding properties at an elevated temperature. So normally core is baked to around 200 to 300 degrees centigrade uh, so that the binder develops its strength. And then after it is baked, it is taken out cooled and then it is cleaned. Cleaning consists of trimming. Uh, trimming is basically is done to remove the fins arising from loose joints. Uh, brushing, it is done to remove any kind of loose stands. Coating, then it's coated with refractory material to increase the refractoriness. And then muddling is to localize repairing is called, uh, or coating is called muddling. Then the coat is brought to required size. <clears throat> then sometimes if the coat is made of two parts, then we can use adhesives to join or wires to join uh, the cores. So with an example, I'll show you how a core is made. So this is a core box. So <coughs> the cope hub and drag hub are there. So sand is placed here, sand is rammed. This is core sand, not molding sand. Remember this is core sand. And then reinforcements are placed here. So steel wire is inserted to provide more strength. And then, <coughs> Vents are cut so that gases can escape and then it is removed from the core box. This is drag and this is the cope part. Cope part is removed, then core paste adhesives are added, two pieces are joined properly, brought to size. Okay. So this is how we make core and this will be inserted. We'll show you in the letter when you make an mold, I'll show you uh, how this core will be used using this same example. Then another very important uh, design aspects of core making is the core print design. Now core print is very important because uh, the print must balance the body so that the core stays in the place during the mold assembly. The print must also withstand the buoyancy force. It should not shift during the mold filling. It should not deflect. And it should help in the heat transfer also. It should allow the gases to pass. <coughs> and unsymmetrical holes should have foolproof prints to prevent incorrect assembly. It is also important. You cannot assemble it in an incorrect way. It should ensure it by design. The prints of the adjacent cores must combine into one. That is also important. Okay, so this is the formula to calculate the buoyancy force and the compressive stress that is acting on the core print. Now, if uh, the 
rho is the density of the metal and rho core is the density of the core material and if the diameter of the core is d and the length of the core is l so diameter is d and length is l whereas the core print length is a and the diameter of the print is d so we have to calculate the compressive stress of the mold material so the weight of the core body because d is diameter considering a cylindrical core uh, d is the diameter l is this length so area cross section area is pi d square by 4 into length will give you the volume volume into the density of the core material will give the weight okay <clears throat> uh, so here which basically the weight means basically the mass okay so uh, the mass of the print will be uh, d is the diameter of the print and a is the length so pi d square by 4 is the area cross section area considering round print into a is the length area into the density will give you the uh, mass of the print so total mass will be wb plus wp and wb should be less than wp okay so wb should be less than or equal to wp wp should be more okay and the buoyancy force acting on the core is core volume is area is pi d square by 4 into length is the volume into density of the metal will be the buoyancy force so b minus d will be the net upward force now this net upward force the cross-sectional area or surface area on which it is acting is surface area on which acting is uh, the pi d is the cross section area surface area into the length of the core print so it is acting on one side so it is 0 0.5 on both side it is uh, b by w it is uniformly divided on both side assuming that it is a balanced core so it is multiplied into 0 0.5 and uh, the <coughs> stress mass of the print must be less than equal to the compressive stress So this is for horizontal core. For vertical cores, the two additional considerations has to be taken. One is that the buoyancy forces transmitted by the core print may shear from the top part of the mold. So shearing is also taken into account. So this is prevented by ensuring sufficient thickness of the mold uh, wall above the above the core print. The second consideration is that the core print must be tapered to facilitate its placement in the mold, and the draft angle is ranges from two to four degrees so this is how we design the core so i hope uh, the discussions on core core sand and core making is clear to you uh, if at all if you have any any doubts regarding whatever we have discussed in this lecture please feel free to put it in the comment box or you can mail it to me uh, again once again thank you for patiently hearing this